Hey there, it's James Taylor here. There often appears to be two competing tribes in the speaking business. These two types of speakers or these two tribes often view each other with a mixture of envy, suspicion, and sometimes a grudging respect. This two tribes view became apparent recently in a debate that was raging on a popular Facebook group for speakers about the efficacy of one particular speaker. So let me explain. You see, in the red corner, we have the keynote tribe. These are the craftsmen and women carefully sculpting their 60 minute keynotes and delivering on stages around the world to corporate clients and associations. The best of them are masterful storytellers, and when not on conference stages transforming audiences, you're gonna find them in an airport lounge somewhere in the world clocking up their air miles. The watering holes for this tribe are at speaker association events, speaker masterminds, or in one of the many Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups that they are members of. Now, keynote speakers are the road warriors. There are a small percentage of whom give 100 plus keynotes a year and make $10,000 and up for an hour of speech on the main stage at a conference. The vast majority, however, earn less than $20,000 a year from speaking and so supplement it with consulting, coaching, and training. Their role models are other keynote speakers whose TED Talks, YouTube videos, and books they absolutely devour. At the higher end, they nearly all want to be on the road less so they can spend more time with their families. And this, this tribe has a higher than average rate of divorce. Meanwhile, in the blue corner, there are the platform speakers. They see speaking on stages as just one of their many income streams, and often it will be the least profitable one at that. The majority of them speak for free in order to sell from the stage. Over 90% of speakers in the world are platform speakers or in that tribe. The very best of them are extremely skilled in sales psychology, and when not on stages, they're probably working on the launch of their next product, their program, online course, or seminar, which is why you sometimes hear platform speakers referred to as seminar speakers, because they will often host their own workshops and multi-day events where they and other platform speakers sell from the stage. Platform speakers are the entrepreneurs of the speaking world. So it's not uncommon to find these kinds of speakers with multi-million dollar businesses. Even top keynote speakers struggle to make over a million dollars a year from just speaking on stages because there are only so many days in the year. Platform speakers see speaking as just one part of an integrated product suite that they offer to clients. Their role models are other gurus and experts whose latest products it seems everyone's talking about or promoting. There is a saying that the grass is always greener on the other side. Keynote speakers, they want the evergreen income streams of the platform speakers, while the platform speakers want the perceived respect that comes with being a great keynote speaker. Now, there are two other types of speakers that you will often hear discussed, motivational speakers and inspirational speakers. You will find both types in each tribe. You can have motivational keynote speakers and motivational platform speakers. My own view is that motivational speakers are all about efficiency, getting things done, productivity, mastering your job or your role. Meanwhile, inspirational speakers are more about effectiveness. They are the visionaries and thought leaders who ask the what if questions to their audiences. In reality, the difference between the motivational speaker and the inspirational speaker are pretty subtle. Now, back to that Facebook post where some speakers were criticizing another speaker. The issue was that this Facebook group was primarily for aspiring professional keynote speakers, whereas the person they were criticizing was a platform speaker. It's like trying to compare apples and oranges. Each tribe are coming from a different perspective and have very different goals, objectives, and what they consider success to look like. You know, Einstein said that everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it's stupid. So here's my advice for aspiring speakers. Is first ask yourself, what kind of speaker do you want to be? This will determine the role models and the business model that you're gonna select. Meanwhile, if you're an event planner looking to book your next speaker for your next event, then you need to understand from which tribe you are selecting your speakers. One final note, I think there's a small but increasing number of what I call hybrid speakers. They are able to combine being a great keynote speaker with the multiple uh, revenue streams, and evergreen revenue streams of being a platform speaker. I count myself amongst this third tribe of hybrid speakers. In my case, I'm booked by event planners, associations, and businesses because they see me as an inspirational keynote speaker. That's what I do. My keynote speaking business is all about inspiring a business audience and I never sell from the stage. However, I also have another part of my business which is for the public where I offer products and programs for individuals to buy. I think in order to be a successful hybrid speaker, you must be willing to wear different hats and adjust your message and offerings to suit at different times. 
If you're a speaker and you would like to receive my free directory of speaking opportunities, then click on the link below. Meanwhile, if you're looking for an inspirational keynote speaker for your next event, then just go to jamestaylor.me forward slash speaking. Thanks for watching. Did you enjoy that video? If so, there's three things that you can do so we can continue the journey together. The first is to click on the button to subscribe to this channel to get more amazing creativity videos like this. The second is you can get my free book on creativity by just clicking on the image here. And the third thing you can do is watch other videos in this series. Thanks for watching.